Electoral College. It's been in place since, well, 1789, and it's worked pretty well since then. But that was before Hillary Clinton lost the presidency thanks to a shortage of electoral votes. Now there are new and predictable calls to abolish the entire system. Leading this particular charge is outgoing New York Democratic Congressman Charlie Rangel of Harlem, who's been there for more than 30 years. He's introduced the House version of a bill to do away with the Electoral College. Congressman Rangel, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Congratulations on your new show, Carlton. Oh, th th thank you, Mr. Rangel. So would you be introducing this legislation if Hillary won? Of course. I've always had. As a matter of fact, the legislation is the opposite of what would benefit uh, Hillary Clinton because it was put into place, and I'm certain you know it, it was put into place to control the popular vote and to superimpose a group right. of people to prevent demagogues from hoodwinking the American people. And so I've been involved in every civil rights struggle, so naturally I am for one man, one vote. But as you know well, uh, when you find some small states that I have two members of the Senate and uh, one congressperson, and they have the same ratio in terms of elected votes, then right. popular state like New York and California, you know that the one reason I introduced it with Barbara Boxes is to let the Americans know we still have not elected or voted for a president. Well, but I'm, I'm not surprised you introduced it with Senator Boxer because, of course, you represent New York and she, California, two of the biggest states by population. And, of course, those states would be the beneficiaries of this, and the losers would be all the many states with much smaller populations. So this is really in your interest, right? I mean, all the focus would be on New York, California, Illinois, Texas, Florida, and that's kind of it. I say this. The reason I'm raising this is not because we've got to have a constitutional change, but how many people really recognize that it's no longer one vote, one person. It's no longer that the majority wins. How many people don't even know they've never even voted for Clinton or Trump? And so I think this is an educational process for a system that the reasons no longer exist. But I wonder by that rationale, and I see what you're saying, but why not abolish the Senate? I mean, if you think of it, think of it that way. So the population of I don't know, Wyoming is about 500,000. There are more people stuck in traffic on the 405 in L.A. right now than that. California has the same number of senators. So why is that fair? It's not. So why not just abolish the whole U.S. Senate and make it a purely representative system? Because one thing we're talking about is a legislative system as it relates to the House and Senate. I know it's a rhetorical question. And the reason we give two, sen two senators uh, to Maine and two senators to California and New York is to bring about a sense of balance. Here right. we are talking about the United States of America. The Electoral College vote really is there right now to make a decision that the American people haven't made. My primary purpose in doing this is to let people know that on January the 6th of next year, it's the first time we will be electing a president of the United States. On December the 19th, it's the first time the Electoral College will be voting. And the last time we voted on November the 8th, we only voted for electors. Now, whether or not you believe that people should not know this, that's what I, I, I'm doing this. My <laughs> wife asked me, why are you doing it? And I said, because you don't even know that you never voted for Hillary. Well, you're and a very selfless man. For, but, you know, the surprising <laughs> thing is, if you read The Federalists, and you read what Alexander Hamilton said, the need for the Electoral College vote, he says, is to avoid demagogues yes. from sucking the American people, being phony and fraudulent, and appealing to groups that are not in the best interest of the United States of America. That's right. Then I looked and I saw what Mitt Romney said. I said, holy mackerel. There must have been a good reason after all. But, but wait, I mean, very quickly, there, the other reason, though, of course, is to make sure that there are some geographic equity. So your uh, district, for example, has gotten much more affluent in the past 20 years, in part because of federal largesse. Huge parts of the country in the middle of the country are withering and dying, and you would take political power from them. Places are already poor and ignored. Why is that a good that thing? That is just not so. What has happened, unfortunately, because of reapportionment because of censoring counts. States like California, New York, nobody campaigns in out state. 
yeah. states like Texas that they know are red or no was thought to be red. And so the candidates for president of the United States, they know that Democratic states that traditionally vote Democrat, they don't even go there. The same no, thing don't. with Republicans, they go to the red states. And so you find the battleground states, the smallest right. states, the rural states, are where the campaign really begins. And I'm not true, saying but... all of this is wrong. I'm just saying 98% of the American people have no clue. And I thank you, because I know you're only doing <laughs> this to kick off your show with something new and exciting. But I think it's terrifically exciting to see what the heck were these guys thinking when they put together this constitutional provision? Well, like you, I'm an educator at heart, too, Congressman. <laughs> Thanks I know for you joining are. us. I appreciate it.